I'm Nancy Showalter, and you're listening to Spirituality for the Politically Incorrect podcast. Welcome, all radical paradigm shifters and creative change makers. You who dare to create a better life and a better world, tap into the power that resides within you and use that power for constructive change. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. I'm so happy to introduce today Christy Whitman, New York Times bestselling author and CEO and founder of the Quantum Success Coaching Academy, which is a 12-month Law of Attraction coaching certification program, and a mighty awesome program, I might add. Christy is also the creator of the Enlightened Kit program and has helped thousands of women and men around the world achieve their goals through her empowerment seminars, speeches, coaching sessions, and products. And she's here today with us to tell us about the seven essential laws. Christy, welcome. I'm so honored to have you here today. Hi, Nancy. I'm really honored to be here with you. And thank you, everybody. Hi. (laughs) Great. Well, Christy, you show people how to apply the universal laws to create freedom, joy, and abundance in their life. And you say that the law of attraction is just one law, and that we really need to learn and apply all the laws. Can you explain that for us? Absolutely. I like to give a couple of analogies when I explain this, and I'll I'll give one analogy for the baker in us and one analogy for the sports fan in us. So depending on what you are, you'll you'll understand from this perspective. But think of um, going into your kitchen and wanting to make a cake right? Uh, think of the law of attraction as the, the sugar for that cake. We need other ingredients beyond just the sugar, because if we try to make a cake with just a sugar, we're only going to have sugar. So I like to think of the seven essential laws as really the ingredients to making that fabulous cake. Another way of looking at it is you're going to go out and play baseball. You've never played baseball before in your life, and someone is going to teach you the rules of the, how to play the game. And they only teach you one rule. And the rule that they teach you is you get to hit the ball or at least try to try to hit the ball three times. So three strikes, you're out. So they teach you that rule. Think of that as the law of attraction. But they don't teach you what happens after. So you hit the ball and you run to third base. Well, now you're out, right? So I like to think of knowing about all the seven essential laws as having the entire recipe and knowing all the rules of the game. I love those analogies. Can you walk us through the seven laws? Absolutely. So most of us know about the law of attraction. The way I like to think of it is a boomerang. And and to even explain this, I want to just take a step back. Everything in the universe is energy. So it, whether it's a computer that's manifested energy or it's the space between where I am and the computer, this, right, all, all, all of this is energy. So everything in the universe, whether it's manifested or unmanifested, is energy. And all energy carries a vibration. So think of everything as energy. All of it carries a vibration. That vibration is communication that goes out to the universe that literally touches the universal law of law of attraction, and it's like a mirror. It's a boomerang. It gives you more back of the same vibration. And we are energy emitters. We're the ones where we generate the energy. So the energy that we are and the beliefs that we hold, the thoughts that we think, the feelings that we have, what we say, what we do, anything that's coming out of our physical body is emitting a vibration. And it's always going to be matched by the law of attraction. So that's law of attraction. The law of deliberate creation is the second law. So now that I'm an energy emitter, I can choose what thoughts I want to think, what feelings I want to have, what beliefs I want to, you know, go forth and to create in my world. So the law of deliberate creation is really that, okay, I'm an energy emitter, and instead of observing something that I'm, that's causing me to have a lower vibration, I'm now going to choose the vibration that I want to give off. So that's the law of deliberate creation. The law of allowing is that you are in a place of alignment, connection, expansion, really in a place of receiving 
when you are feeling higher vibrations, when you're on the higher vibrational scale. Because when we're on the higher vibrational scale, scale we feel expanded. Like the, the feelings of appreciation and gratitude and love and empowerment, you know, those are all feelings and vibrations that are very expanded. They're very high frequency, high vibration. Anger, resentment, powerlessness, they're on the lower end of the spectrum and they're a lower vibration. And whenever we're feeling that expansion, we're in a space of allowing. And that's when we can feel good. It's when things can be manifested. It's when we can have a deeper connection in love and relationships. Um, when we're in a lower space and we're constricted, we're not allowing. And the love can't come through. The manifestations can't come through. So that's the law of allowing. The fourth law, which is my favorite, which I feel is the law that really ties everything together, is the law of sufficiency and abundance. Now, we live in a completely abundant universe, although most of us have been taught that it's lack and limitation. And we were taught that by the media. We're taught that, unfortunately, by the people that cared about us and raised us because they didn't know any better. So we're taught that if we want to you know, be better, we have to go buy that car or achieve this level of success or have the man or get the body or you know, all the things that are outside of us and that we're just not enough in who we are. We have to get that degree. We have to prove ourselves. And the fact is, is that we are, in this moment, abundant. That's, we were created from a creator. We came from a universe that is abundant. And the doorway, the shift, really, into this whole entire field of abundance is coming from a place of being satisfied because it's the law of sufficiency and abundance. So when you're in lack of any kind, you can't attract abundance because let's go back to the laws. You got the vibrations, right? You got the higher vibration of abundance. Abundance is a very expanded space. It's a very allowing space. It's a very connected, aligned space. It's a high vibration. Lack, on the other hand, is on the other spectrum. It's a very low vibration. It's very constricted. And you can't get from here to here. You have to have a doorway. You have to have a a place to get through to be able to even connect with the abundance. And so at least coming from a place of who I am, what I have, what I experience, the money I own, the husband I have, the children I have, they're at least enough. It, they're good enough. It's sufficient. That's the doorway to be able to reach to the higher vibrations of abundance. So the, the fifth law is the law of pure potentiality. And this is very similar but yet also very different to the law of abundance, a law of sufficiency and abundance in that everything that's energy, everything that's like between the space between you and I, everything that's unmanifested, it all has potential to become something. So if, if you're outside and you're feeling the space between you and the cosmos, I mean, all of that energy, all of that space, it's all potential. It's all can all be created and brought into some type of manifestation. And Thing, man, energy is always wanting to manifest itself into some type of form. If we can think of it, we can certainly manifest it if we don't talk ourselves out of it. So there's pure potential for what we think about. There's pure potential for what we want to create. There's pure potential in this universe for everything because everything's energy. Um, the sixth law is the law of detachment. And the law of detachment is really misunderstood, but at the basic level, just for our conversation here, Anytime you are focused on something and you're feeling that type of constriction, you're feeling lack, you're feeling limitation, you're, you know, you're not in an allowing space, what it's doing is you're attached. And that attachment cannot you know, bring things to you. So sometimes people think, well, detachment means just stop caring about what you want. And that's not what I'm saying. We want to focus on what we want. We, think we have things that are of value in our lives, and, and it's important for us to know what's of value for us and to focus on what we want, but focus it from a place of being an expansion. So many times the how, the what, the where, the who, if we get caught up on that, a lot of times we get very constricted. So it's good to just let that go and let that be, be um, detached, be unattached from the details but be very attached to what you want to create. So that's the law of detachment. And the seventh universal law is the law of polarity. Now this law says that every subject is really a series of subjects. 
So for example, if you have temperature, which is one thing, on one end of a spectrum you have extreme hot, and on the other end of the spectrum you have extreme cold. And then you have all the degrees, the whole spectrum in between. Now, same with the subject of, say, money. Okay, a lot of times people think, well, I'm focused on money. I want more money, but why don't I have the money? I mean, I'm, I'm just in this horrible place. I need money. Why isn't the money coming? They don't realize that they're on the spectrum of lack. And what we know is that you can't be in abundance if you're also in lack. So there's a spectrum, and it's up to us as deliberate creators to choose, do I want to continue to be in lack, or do I want to move over to the pole of abundance? So that's how they all kind of fit together. Awesome. Thank you for the most comprehensive explanation. That is so useful to uh, everybody. That, that's great. Thanks. So, Christy, you also talk about becoming a money magnet. So what do you mean by that? And, and of course, more importantly, how do you do that? Well, everything is energy, like we said in the beginning. And money is no different. Money is also energy. It's green energy. And so money likes to go where there is high vibration. So if we are putting out a signal of a high vibration, so for example, love, appreciation, gratitude, once again, money is attracted to that energy. But if we are in a low vibration, money is repelled from that space. Now, some people could argue, well, I'm very appreciative and very grateful, yet I still don't have any money. Well, that's the time to then look at what is your relationship with money? Because most of us learned about money. Money is all just, it's a medium of exchange. That's all money is. All, money is just energy. But it's the meaning and the definition and you know all of that that we put on what money means. So you could have had a father that said, oh my gosh, rich, rich people are horrible, mean, you know, conniving people, and we don't want to ever be in contact with rich people. Well, you're going to have this perception of people that are rich, whether you're consciously aware of it or not, and you're going to have this part of you that, of course, doesn't want to contradict your dad and doesn't want to be judged by your father. So you'll create money problems so that you don't reach the level, level of wealth that you want because you don't want to be a rich person because they're blah, blah, blah. So it's important for us to look at what it was our parents' relationships as it related to money. What did they say? What did they do? How did they treat people? What did, were their opinions and their judgments? And then look at the whole entire environment that you were raised in as it related to money. Did your parents completely avoid the discussion of money or were they open about it? Or was it on the other end of the spectrum where it's like money was always the cause of the problems and the fights and the, you know, the, the really the dysfunction in the, in the, in the marriage and in the relationship. So it's important to look at those kind of things because whether we know it or not, those were seeds that were planted within us. And a lot of times it can help us understand our own relationship with money. We all have, let me go back to the beginning, everything is energy, everything carries a vibration, and we are in relationship with everything that's energy and that carries a vibration, and that includes money. So we have a vibrational relationship with money. And if you don't have money or if you're in debt or you constantly you get out of debt and then you get back in, you know, we, we have something that's going on energetically first because every manifestation is always about energy first. It's always about the emotion first. That's the first manifestation. And then it shows up as material in the physical world. So when you can start, you know, feeling the feelings of love for money, oh, now that's going to bring up some stuff for people because you're not supposed to love money. You know, that's the money's the root of all evil. You know, it, money can't put money as our God, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not saying that, but the the energy that you carry about and towards and with money, if it's a higher vibration of love and appreciation, then you're gonna be a magnet to money versus avoiding it or being frustrated with it or you know, most of the dysfunction that we have in this vibrational relationship with money. So when you can start changing the vibration, the energy connection with money, you actually will see a different evidence in your life with what will manifest. 
Yeah, and I think you're just talking about that flow, and that love means the flow, in and out, freely, without any blocks. And and you're so right about when we're children that we don't even have to think we're thinking about money. We just absorb it. And I think one of, maybe you could comment, because I think one of the big issues is if you're on a spiritual path, you shouldn't be thinking about being rich or having money. You know, this is a prevalent thought. And I know from my background in a spiritual um, background, that is something I've had to really work with too. Absolutely. I, it, you know, there is a very big false belief that if you are a spiritual person, you also can't be wealthy. And the thing is, is that um, I don't know where that came from, but it's so mixed up because if you are a person that wants to do good, and make great impact and help people and you know do those kind of things you actually need money to do that I'm very fortunate in that I know how to attract money and by doing that I've been able to um, invest that money in my business so that I'm able to make a bigger impact on the people that you know at the reach that I have for people that know about my work so that they can then come into the coaching Academy you know, it's a perfect example. It's like the QSCA, there's a tuition that's involved because there's expenses of doing business. If someone was like, I'm spiritual, I don't want any money, I don't have any money, how are they going to then enter into a beautiful program like the QSCA and have all the benefits that it has if they don't make the money? You know, I heard years ago that money is an amplifier, and if you're a really good person, if you're a really connected person, you're going to do even better work out in the world. You're going to be able to give more. You're going to be even a better person because you're going to be able to give more to charities and things like that. And, you know, it, it is an amplifier. And for me in my life, I like to think about what does money mean? And money means, really, the bottom line is freedom. And the, the freedom that I have since I do have money is that I can give to charities and I can give a lot of money to charities. And I've and I always been very connected to charities like with children. And my son Maxim, when he was two months of age, he was diagnosed with having a heart problem and he had to have open heart surgery. And there was two hospitals in Montreal that were involved in this process of saving his life. And so now we give freely, openly and very generously to those hospitals. I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have money. And that makes a bigger impact on the other kids that are going through the things that he's going through. I'm able to invest money so that more people know about this way of thinking because this way of thinking and this belief system and what we just talked about as far as the universal laws, it changes your life. I wasn't born with this information. I, I was a very struggling person, full of anger, very, very much in lack, you know, negative as all get out. And now my life is completely different because I've applied and learned this information. And I'm able to literally, as a career, impact people's lives because of this and help them you know, become coaches so that they can help impact other people's lives. I wouldn't have been able to do any of that if I didn't have money. And so money for me, the energy behind and the connection that I have with money is all about freedom, that I live the lifestyle that if I want to take a fabulous trip, I can go take it. Life is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be an adventure. It's supposed to be joyful. And it's not because of the money. The money itself, a big pile of money, doesn't do anything. It's what you can do in exchange for that money, but you have to have a vibrational relationship that's healthy with the money in order to attract it in the first place. Beautiful, beautiful description of that flow, of the give and take, and, and how you receive openly that abundance that the universe brings to you and then give back. Very, very beautiful. Well, Christy, I know you're a little different from the, some of the other law of attraction uh, teachers in that you really believe that in clearing and going deeper when contrast shows up in your life. And um, can you tell us a little bit about that? And, and I really think that's such an important concept. Absolutely. So let's define contrast first. Contrast is something that we don't want in our lives. And so, you know, that happens for every single person. And, and, and contrast could be just something really annoying, like being stuck in traffic, or it could be something really big, like, you know, my son having to have open heart surgery. There's lots of degrees and a big spectrum of what contrast can show up in our own lives. But the thing is, is that when you have contrast, you know, we as deliberate creators can say, okay, what is it that I do want? And be able to shift the energy of that. 
what most people think with law of attraction is just think positive. Just be positive and everything will be fine. Well, we were given emotions for a reason. Most of us were taught at a very young age to suppress those emotions, deny the emotions, cut off from our emotions, which when we're doing that, we're cutting off from ourselves. Our emotions are us. Our emotions are literally, as Abraham Hicks says, our guidance system as to what we're projecting our energy because any lower level emotion, and I didn't say negative emotion because all emotions are positive, but any lower level vibrational emotion is going to let us know what are we attracting in our future? What are we, what are we magnetizing to us or repelling from us? And the higher level emotions are actually what's attracting more of what we want to us. So when we say go deeper and when we say let's do the clearing, if you're feeling angry about something, there's a reason. That's information to you, from you, about something that's going on. Either someone's not treating you right or you know, you, you're just holding on to anger from a past relationship that needs to be released because back to the beginning, everything is energy. And emotions are energy. They're, they're intended to be energy in motion. We're, we're t- intended to feel the emotion. And as Jill Bolton Taylor says, that in about 90 seconds, if we really truly feel the emotion, then we can gain the information and it's gone. It's released. But most of us feel it and we suppress it. We deny it. We push it down. We, we numb from it. And then that stays as pockets of energy. And that becomes like our set point of how we live in the world. That set point is then our attraction point because our thoughts are a vibration, but our emotions are the, it's like the strongest energy signal that we give out. And if we're just being positive, you know, but we're emitting, like we're here, this anger inside or we're we're frustrated or, you know, we're, we're disappointed or whatever we have going on within our emotions. The universe is listening to that. The universe is responding to our vibration, not our thoughts. So that's why when, when, constriction happens we talked about the law of allowing when you feel yourself constricted in any way that's signals going out to the universe and so that's why we have to stop and clear pay attention what's going on within me because if we actually process the energy process the emotion then and only then will it clear and then we return to our natural state beautiful and I think this is such an important key because otherwise we're just living kind of in a Pollyanna existence of mouthing positive affirmations, but but not really attracting, as you say, to us what we want. And we know also, as you say, everything's energy, including these memories that we have that we really sometimes just need to clear out because they become blocks and false beliefs that we set up as limitations. So thank you so much for that that explanation. It's quite beautiful and powerful. You're welcome. To, and the deeper understanding of the law of attraction and, of course, the seven laws that you're describing. You're also, you know, you say that there's a lot of myths out there, and you're, you're touching on some of them, of course, about the law of attraction, and they can be frustrating to us. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, one, you know, there's, there's a couple of them we thought we talked about, so I'll just, I'll just list them, but one of them is just be detached. So a lot of people find that it, that means just don't care. You know, like you really are wanting to attract a partner in your life because you want to share your life with a partner, but but you're supposed to be detached. So it's like, okay, well, whatever. If he comes, he comes. If he doesn't, he doesn't. That We're lying to ourselves. So it, it's important to be real and honest with ourselves because that's not what detachment means. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we did just t- touch on it, and it's about being positive. Just think positive. And I love what Abraham Hicks says about it. It's like It's like we're driving in our car and our gas gauge goes to empty, and instead of pulling over at the side of the road or you know, pulling over and getting gas, you stick a happy face sticker on your gas gauge. Now, you're going you're gonna to run out of gas. You know? So it's the same concept as just be positive and I'm going to do a thousand million affirmations. We're so, it's so heady that we're not, we're not involving the rest of our being. Because you can think positive all day long, but we're not a talking head. We have a heart. We have a, you know, what, what my teacher, Karen Mark Wilson, talks about, a hara. We have our, our power center. I mean, we've got our juices within our physical body. And just the, you know, happy, positive thoughts, that organically happens when actually we feel good. That's, that's what happens after we're in a line and feel good. 
It's not, you know, and, and affirmations do work. Most people, um, you know, go, I'm, I'm a happy, joyful person. And it's like they're not feeling it. They're, they're saying it. You know, it's just like thinking positive, happy thoughts. You know, I'm abundant. It's like it's not doing anything. It's not carrying. It, it, it's a better vibration than, oh, my gosh, my life sucks. Obviously, it's, it's good to change that. But you have to feel it in your body. It has to work. Think of yourself as a sig like an energy signal. You know, you're a emitter of energy that's coming off of you. And if you just are up here thinking, I'm abundant, it's so much different than if you're dropping down into the heart and you feel it, I'm abundant. And the energy that can come off of that is so much more powerful than just thinking positive alone. you got to feel it. And the third one, the third myth is that just be in your now. Because I'll tell you what, that is a great concept. It's great if you can do it. But unfortunately, we're not wired that way. Our mind is always going back to the past, back into the moment, into the future. I'm sure many of you that are watching this interview, you've had many moments of like the thought of the past or, huh, what am I going to eat for lunch or what am I going to, do I have to go grocery shopping for dinner? I mean, our minds are always doing this cycling, cycling, it's always a cycle between the past, the present and the future. And so to be in the now, that is where our power is, of course. It's like, but all time is simultaneous. Our past, our present, and our future all exist right now. And that's why you were saying I'm different from other law of attraction coaches or you know, people that talk about law of attraction is that I believe that we need to clear up the energy from our past and also project what we want, connect with a future self that is living the life that we want, that has it all as we define it, so that when you're in your now, you're clear of your past stuff and you're also projecting into a future with excitement because if we're projecting into a future that is um, scary or fearful or there's you know what we don't want we're gonna feel anxiety in our now and it's hard to stay in the present moment it's hard to be in the now when you're anxious right and and like you said you know the past is really our now as long as that energy is locked into those memories or whatever it's that energy is not flowing and our future is now also because we're creating it now so that that's awesome thank you for that that explanation I love it and you know you've talked about a lack versus an abundant mindset can you give us some examples of the difference between those two and how they manifest absolutely there's a lot of examples um, one example I will give is that you know when we go into a given situation doesn't matter whatever we're doing are we looking for what's right and good or what's wrong and bad and that needs to be fixed um, you know most of us are trained that we need to look at a situation and look for all the bad things or all the things that you know all the things that don't belong so to speak and we focus on that Another one is staying focused and really putting all your attention on a problem. You know, like a contrast will always show up for each one of us all the time in our lives. It's up for us to look at that contrast and say, okay, I don't want that. I want this instead. But most people with a lack mentality will focus on the problem. They'll talk about the problem. They'll analyze the problem. It, it becomes about the problem. Person with an abundant mentality will say, okay, I, I can choose what I want. This is what I want instead. Or look at a situation and say, oh, here's a situation. There's at least nine options to, you know, to solve this problem or to change this situation. And then they start listing all the different, you know, possibilities. There's there's a choicefulness in abundance where there isn't in lack. Awesome, great, great explanation. Thank you so much. And that and it's such a big. Th I think it's a big thing with a lot of people where we may look at the problem instead of moving into the solution side immediately. Uh, that, that's awesome um, uh, suggestion and, and advice. So Christy, can you tell us about the free gift that you have for our viewers today? Absolutely. I've created seven free videos that are about five to eight minutes in length, and they're all on each of the different universal laws that we've um, talked about, but they go a little bit deeper and a little bit more information, giving personal examples. And on top of that, because I have the Quantum Success Coaching Academy, I have fabulous coaches that are willing to um, coach people for free to get so that they can get more practice. So it's really a win-win for everybody because the coaches are there willing to give you a free session, no cost, no obligation, 
and you can actually um, you know figure out what it is in your life that you want to attract and where where vibrationally you are and the coach can help you get into a better vibration and uh, be able to attract what you want so you get a free hour session with a QSCA coach and seven free videos that is awesome and <laughs> thank you so much for those gifts I'm sure everybody is going are going to take advantage of it and I hope they will and Christy, thank you so very much for being with us today. The information you have shared is just um, invaluable to everybody on their path to that freedom and joy and abundant life that you're talking about. And I know you are a master at the Law of Attraction, and this, this has just been an awesome opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for having me. And thank you, everybody, for being with us. And we will see you next time. And until then, keep an open mind, a generous heart, and a powerful spirit. Thank you for being with me today. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, download, and comment. I'd love to hear from you, and your support is much appreciated. And don't forget, go to nancyshowalter.com to get your free electronic copy of my book, it's Okay to Be Rich, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Increased Wealth and Personal Mastery, endorsed by T. Harv Ecker. And my free mini course, How to Speak Your Success, The Shocking Truth of How Your Words Impact Achieving Your Goals. I'll see you next week.